Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to Game and Friday. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, and it is also Film and Friday. Because tonight we are working on episode two of Timeless Gamers. We are indeed. All right, guys, let's jump into VR news for this Friday, March 31st, 2017. Let's talk about Robo Recall, which officially, as of this latest release, gets 360 degree support. So basically what had been happening uh, when you spun around too far, the game would try to funnel you back using basically a front facing setup as the default arrangement for Oculus units. Now with an extra sensor and these changes, it's going to support 360 smoothly and fully. Haven't had a chance to try it out myself. Definitely looking forward to it because honestly, haven't even played Robo Recall since I did the quick look on it. Next up, layoffs hitting Rock Band VR developer Harmonix. Now, they just released Rock Band VR Typically, for a game company, that isn't actually unusual. Even game companies that generally aren't losing a metric crap ton of money will do layoffs just as part of a cyclical, you know, financial fiscal maneuver that gets done quarterly, you know, per game that gets released. It's something that's more common than you'd think. Now, where it might be a little bit different is kind of the statement that went along with this last round of layoffs, which went as follows. Uh, the company noted that this was an effort to align with our current and anticipated development needs. These people all played a role in making Harmonix and its games what they are today, and we are more than grateful for their contributions. We are working to ensure that they are taken care of as we make this change. So it's that statement right there, because I've worked, you know, for example, Electronic Arts Canada, Exidy and myself, where they certainly didn't announce publicly layoffs to shareholders. Uh, usually they were pretty, you know, insignificant numbers, but part of project management. Next story, the first impressions of the new Samsung Gear 360 camera, this from Upload VR. Now, what they're basically saying about it, it's more comfortable to use, which makes sense with that handle. That wasn't the case previously. They're just hoping that the pricing is more in line at some point within the next few months of what the competitors are pricing their products for. And mass market adoption rate with that current price, probably not likely to happen. So it would be nice to see it notch down a little bit. It's something I've been considering, but I want obviously that best bang for the buck. Good quality or at least decent quality but also an affordable price. And personally, I haven't seen it yet, haven't made that investment, and obviously lots of others as well, for their own reasons and their own price points. Next story, Google confirming that Huey Mate 9 Pro is now daydream ready. Not gonna pronounce that again, but uh, uh, it is boasting the Mate 9, an AMOLED 5.5 inch screen, with a resolution of 1080 by 1920, powered by a 1.8 gigahertz octa-core high silicon Kirin 960 and four gigabytes of RAM. So definitely a decent phone. My concern, and we'll get to that probably in a later story, is definitely we will, and we'll touch on it again, is the topic of games for the daydream, but we'll get to that. Next story, mobile VR not pushing virtual reality forward, in fact, maybe hindering it. This from newatlas.com. And I like how they opened their article. They said, look, when the virtual reality devices first hit the scene, the expectation was that mobile VR would progress and grow at a striking pace. Fast forward to the present, little has changed in mobile VR to the point that its slow evolution could be dragging down virtual reality in general. So then they go to illustrate their point and they say, look no further than the Gear VR and its only real competitor, the Daydream View. 
those two headsets account for really the major players in the mobile VR space. And while there were reasons to be excited about them initially, their shortcomings and the lack of progress, you know, hasn't excited many people. And one good example, and this one really just brings the whole message home, is the One Controller. I get that Gear VR copied Daydream's design somewhat, but why only one? There's a lot of things that you miss out on. You basically limit yourself, and they mentioned this in the article as well, to basically a glorified Wii remote type of experience, uh, as opposed to fully tracked like you would get with the Rift or Vive. I would hope for future generations, we do get exactly that, multiple controllers for a more full tracking experience. Next news piece, very cool. This one coming from the uh, Silicon Valley Expo, VR Expo. It is a company called Artec 3 d and they've got a device called the Shapeify booth. And these guys are selling 3D cameras. They've got a lineup of about three different cameras. They're all around the $20,000 US range. Then they've also got this Shapeify booth. There's no price that I could see attached to it, but very freaking cool. What happens is it basically you step in it almost like one of those airport security scanners, you know, where you raise your arms like so, kind of like that, except it generates a 3D model of the human model standing inside. And what's neat about that, not only could you use that for video games, uh, other graphical purposes, you can send that model to a 3D printer and conceivably create molds that are way more accurate than some of the stuff that's being created now. So action figures, uh, you know, more expensive, the hundreds and low thousands of dollars, two and three foot, you know, stormtroopers, if it's Star Wars or Star Trek, whatever the, you know, the theme is, the sci-fi show, the fantasy show, it has the potential to just make those models that much better. Very cool. I've got an example picture up. I'm going to show you what the fella looks like uh, before and after. I thought they did a fantastic job. And his name is Az Balabanian. So you'll see him in video what he looks like and then the finished model. The other thing this has obvious potential for is social virtual reality experiences or even MMOs where you want to use your likeness or, you know, maybe the likeness of somebody else. You got a buddy who works out and, uh, you know, six foot four ripped with uh, 24 inch arms. Have him step in the Shapeify booth and use that model, etc. Next up. Uh, this is the last story for the night, guys. Uh, I thought this was really, really freaking cool. Uh, Google revealing their hyper-immersive haptic feedback system for VR. Now, to date, sight and sound have been done fairly well in virtual reality. There's really no issue, and there's small incremental changes, but changes nonetheless. It's senses like touch, taste, and smell that are ultimately more difficult to not just reproduce, but populate a game or experience in real time. Now, Google has spent millions trying to automate a haptic device that can relay those three senses, and they haven't had much luck until human resource reallocation and what they are calling their haptic helper system. Now, to use this as a gamer, you just call the number or there's a 24 seven web page that you can click on within minutes, depending on where you live geographically, you're gonna get a helper that shows up. These all go through rigorous training with developer specific applications to relay those three senses to you basically in real time while you play the gamer experience. The only thing really involved, and it makes sense when you think about it, when you break it down as a gamer, you've got to adopt a more scheduled approach. Figure out what games you're going to be playing on the weekend and schedule the haptic helper accordingly. It's just going to make sense and allow you to utilize five instead of two senses. 
Now, in exchange for that, so kind of move away from that ad hoc buffet system of just playing whatever game you feel like at the time, right? In exchange for that, 10,000 unique sensory experiences, each of which the trained haptic helper is going to be able to provide you with real-time precision. Absolutely freaking fantastic. All right, guys, that is it for the news. Time to commence with Exidy and my Game and Friday. Cheers, guys. Have a kick-ass weekend.